Welcome to Tradespotting's take on volatility. This is the director's cut, so the audio is being re-recorded to make it even better for those people watching along. Obviously, the video isn't up right now because I'm just out of facial reconstruction surgery before entering the witness protection program. And until such times as that um, allows me to get back to full power, then I'm doing these tip requests, tips, you know, use the link in the description below, send me a tip and let me know what ticker you're looking at or any other details you have on your trade. And I'll try and do my best to increase your profitability. Though it's not financial advice, I do do my absolute best. Channel needs fax requests. When it comes to volatility trading, you have to be aware of the risks. In 2018, we saw Volmageddon, a tough time for volatility linked products. XIV experienced a significant loss of nearly $2 billion in investor assets, and that event really shook the market and caused a lot of concern among investors. Since then, the total volume invested in these products has halved to $2.69 billion. Despite these setbacks, still investors interested in trading volatility. Let's take a look at the volume for popular linked ETFs. Ultra Short VIX Short Term Futures, that's UVXY that Donna asked about, the volume So let's take a look at this and some concerns from viewers, including um, Remember, the price, just like any other asset, is influenced by various factors, which include market conditions, investor sentiment, overall volatility levels. It's a complex equation. UVXY is designed to track the performance of volatility futures indexes. So when stock market gyrations pick up, UVXY will rise. However, it's crucial to understand that it's a leveraged ETF, which means that compounding and rebalancing will affect price, as we've seen recently on the 23rd of June. But don't worry, Donna, the ETFs are um, still going strong. And as we say, the volume has picked up, though prices have changed a lot after a 10 to 1 split. They're adjusting their valuation methods. There's a couple of new ETFs coming on board um, that are linked to volatility and Although these can be tricky to play, it's crucial to understand the risks involved. If you are considering trading UVXY or any other volatility-linked ETF, make sure to do your own research and understand the objectives of that particular product and then monitor market conditions, especially if it's a long-term trade. So that's it for the brief intro and explanation. Let's now look at the chart and the recent moves and the likely next levels so you can exploit these potential moves in the stock market. And why might that be good? Because SPY is on a tear. At some point, it's going to hit a level which will look in retrospect to be a level of resistance that was very obvious. And at that point, the volatility link products will see a massive spike. And that's what a lot of people are looking at. It may well be then you're anticipating this already in a trade or you're waiting for it. Either way, let's look at the charts. Hit that like button. Thank you very much. And if you'd like a quick take on my uh, in, um, impressions or perspective on your trades or tickers, let me know with the links below. Spot 49, and we're opening it on the four hour time frame. As you can see, Last month, a 1 to 10 split again. So that's the way. So in order to confirm this most recent area on the daily time frame as a local low, you'd be looking for a tracement back up to around what is now 83 on this chart and a previous level of resistance in there. So you'd be challenging a previous high, which would mean you'd been challenging the concept of this current downward slope. In this is the overall downward slope and trend. As we can see, we've got our Fibonacci, which would measure the strength of the retracement back to the top side. We have the Rocky Outcrop flash target, www.patreon.com slash Rocky Outcrop. And you get indicator to you get that flash, the best indicator, only ever indicator that ever tells you where price is going. So price action makes it back above that target. You've got your 236 from this dominant fib. You've got a most, more recent fib we'll look at in a moment. And we'll also go into the overall umbrella of what is this asset? 
What's it based on? That's like it comes from a derivative of VIX itself, a derivative of SPY. So we'll look at those charts, those likely directions, and they'll give us a little bit extra information on our edge for the trade on UVXY itself. You can see the splits there, it compounds and rebalances. And as such, it leads to extra risk on long-term holds on UVXY. There are new ETFs linked to volatility come in. We'll talk more about them. And I'll drop in with these director cuts as and where appropriate. So thanks very much. Hit the like button. If you like a fax re request or your own ticker, your take on a ticker um, updated or uh, with the addition of trade spotting analysis, then I'll do my best to increase your profitability. Just let me know using the links in the description below. I call it a fax, but it's just a tip link. Thanks very much. At this point in the video, I'm talking about how UVXY is the derivative of VIX and it itself is in a downward sloping channel, which it broke out of. And these are the potential retest zones below. So if it's going to continue this downward sloping trend, these are the targets. The first low we've already reached, the next one in at around 11.50 and then below down to 8, where we see our biggest moves from 8, huge moves from 11 and change, though at this stage it doesn't necessarily break the trend. whether or not it defeats this ultimate downward sloping trend wouldn't be so sure and then you've obviously got a chance for a bounce at the first low but the first low is the fake out zone from this being a downward sloping formation it challenging the previous low from before that formation and if it doesn't exceed it then you could potentially be talking about big moves back up again but we're already pushing below it now and this tiny recovery isn't significant enough to say that i don't think so we're looking at potential for vix on the short to medium term can see looking left that we're challenging our previous high there is a touch of divergence but until such times as we make a retracement and put in a local low this is an uptrend so you've got to be careful that you're I'm now back into uvxy and back to the daily time frame where you can see lots of flashes to look back up to on this thing so if we started making it back towards 33 that would be a tweezer bottom from here which would suggest you could have a significant recovery back up to important um, Fibonacci levels. I'm not seeing that right now. I'm seeing that potential target and the fact that it would be meeting a downward sloping resistance. We'd manage that without breaking the linear trend. But as you could see from VIX and SPY, that's not necessarily what we're anticipating happening right now. That's just that flash. But we can see that you're low on the RSI. Price is putting in lower lows. The RSI, not quite. This is the area where it would bounce from. And you have the hint then of a potential reversal divergence, though the hints aren't strong enough, especially in a downward trend. You need much more significant moves than that. So this has just always been doing these. You know, the, the trend here is to make these sort of lows and then have an extreme reaction, potentially from a double bottom, as you saw here with the divergence. You move back out and test these previous resistance. drops and then it gets that recovery so that's what you're looking for on VIX if you're long right now the reverse split does give you the potential to um, have an event like that shortly but it all depends on SPY so here you can see the trend it's quite clear then how difficult it is with the compounding and rebalancing to have a long-term hold on VIX though you can UVXY pardon me though you can four hour time frame where you can see this low isn't yet bullishly divergent, potentially flagging on the RSI, you haven't made out of the bearish control zone, and it's a little bit dangerous. Still then, you've not managed to make it back above the 236 from this peak. If you're to take this instead from this most recent drop down here to the current low, then a 236 comes in at 26 spot 19, which isn't a crazy level from here. Um, but it does break the most recent intermediate area where you saw price slipping down through support gain at around 22. So 22, 26, 32, 39 and 46 would be the levels to look to immediately based on the four hour if you were anticipating a reversal. But this is in the bearish control zone and not doing well yet. One hour, you had your flash fill here back up at 68 spot 84. Now that's what that equivalent is at April and... Well, you do have price action falling down, it's still bullishly divergent and you're not in the bearish control zone here. If we just go in there and check RSI, zoomed in, you've managed to pull yourself back out of the bearish control zone, back up on your, above your own moving average and hint it.
working at the moment. So be careful there. Um, Donna, you... ...be perhaps slightly confusing for other people. And you're looking to put in a limit order to sell at a price which may be hit after hours, which will obviously depend on which broker you're using. If you've got somebody like, say, IBKR, you can do that with a checkbox. And typically the help function on these websites will have an advisor who can give you an answer probably quicker and more efficient and directly where it is that you, you'll need to click. Obviously, different people use different brokers, so I'm not sure I'll know exactly, but IBKR is just a checkbox and it's fairly simple to do it. And obviously on Discord, lots of people there can give you a little bit of advice if you'd rather talk to them. So you want to put in a limit order that allows you to sell potentially in electronic trading hours or in the post-market trading or pre-market trading, which is about allowing the broker to facilitate orders on at those times. And of course, you'll then need to put in the limit order at that price. So it's the same type of order type. It's just a facilitating it, that it be done in electronic trading times. Which is difficult, of course, you know, Donna, like other people, don't have all day, every day to focus on trades, especially if it's one trade, you know, it, it can be that you would like to do other things as it's going on. And if that means that you need to set up orders in that way, then fair play. So we're looking at UVX, we're looking down at the one hour time frame where it's as low as it is meaningful. But are we going to see anything today? Let's go down to the 15 minute time frame. We've got a flashback at 1870. The Rocky Outcrop Flash. You can get this for yourself at www.patreon.com slash Rocky Outcrops. The only indicator in the world that tells you where price is going. So 1890, that's the next target on this. And then you've got another one at 1968. There will be significant percentage moves there if you made it to the top target. And you'd also be then reversing this downward slope and trend. Would you be breaking this linear Level you would, of course, then. So the potential for a reversal is in, especially when you've got the divergence and you're looking for an, a an aim in for the 236. But like we say, lots of different places to look to. And perhaps you'd have this Fibonacci retracement from this breakdown, maybe even up there. And first target, 1929. Get the second flash, you'd be up at 1972 and a 382, take you back towards those $20 levels. Very possible. Very possible. So the trend is down. The volatility on these indexes themselves, in this particular one, is actually quite low. The volume over the piece over the last year has increased by 400%. And really then, the only thing that's potentially bullish is the momentum. And only in the sense that it doesn't match the strength of the trend to the downside. So there's question marks about the strength of the downward slope and trend, but it's definitely dominant and in effect as we speak. And we can say that we have targets to the top side, but they're usually met in sharp, sharp moves, not necessarily long established trends. And while it's difficult to hold long term, there are areas we could be looking to. So I'd be paying attention to that, Donna. I'd be right to look to get um, market orders, sorry, limit orders in while the market is closed, it's still facilitating those trades. And I hope your broker allows you to do that. If you have any more questions, just hit me up on Discord or leave me a comment under this video and I'll do my absolute best to help. But those are the targets, short term. This is the Fibonacci I'd be paying attention to if I was looking for a reversal and the price breaking that trend, having then put in some sort of bottoming formation on retrospect with the momentum confirming that turnaround that's what I'd be looking to. Anybody, any other questions about any other sort of index or any other sort of ETF, any other stock or short-term security, do get in touch using the links below and I'll do my best to make you a video. When I have this, um, when I'm in convalescence, um, I still want to keep the channel going and the audience engaged, but obviously I want it to work for everybody. So thank you very much for hitting the like button, watching the video, giving it the watch time, any sharing you think you just, this is quite a val you know, there's value in this video. I think most people would benefit from. And um, thanks very much for watching. Be good to each other and let me know if you'd like me to look at anything. There's another video coming up shortly for another factual quest I've got. And I love doing them. So get in touch. Thanks very much. See you all soon. Thanks, Donna.